Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg has been described as appalling by Labour after he revealed that he's opposed to abortion in all circumstances, even if a woman has been raped. Well, the MP, who's been tipped as a potential party leader, also suggested he's opposed to same-sex marriage. I just want to show you something from uh, the man who, according to the Conservative Home website, is now the favourite uh, to be the next leader of the Conservative Party, Jacob Rees-Mogg. He's been on television this morning talking about abortion. With... Um same-sex marriage, that is something that people are doing for themselves. With abortion, it is something that is done to the unborn child. Are you completely and opposed to abortion in all circumstances? Um, yes, I am. Rape and incest? Sexual violence? I'm afraid so. Really? Life, life is sacrosanct and begins at the point of conception. Well, Jacob Rees-Mogg is, of course, a, a Roman Catholic, father of six himself. What do you make of that statement? I mean, is that a statement that a potential Prime Minister, potential Tory, uh, can be made by a potential Prime Minister or potential Tory leader? Everybody's entitled to their own personal views and their own conscience views about an issue like about abortion. But for somebody who the Conservative Party seems to be suggesting could be the next Prime Minister to want to control women's bodies in this way, in cases, even cases like rape and incest, I personally find quite shocking. And the shocking thing not re is not really Jacob Rees Mogg's personal views, he's entitled to them. The shocking thing is that so many people in the Conservative Party seem to think that he should be their next leader. I think that's an appalling thought. And if he were to become leader, do you think this would actually go beyond being his personal view and would be back on the uh, legislative agenda? Well, he didn't say this morning, of course, I wouldn't ever suggest that there should be any change to the legislation. I'm just talking about my personal view. You know, had he said that, he might have given people a little bit more reassurance. He didn't say that. You know, and that, I think, is the real worry about Jacob Rees-Mogg, is that you've got somebody who has got very reactionary, very right-wing views on a whole series of different issues. He's entitled to those views, but for the Conservative Party to think he should be their leader and he should be the leader of their, of their country is, frankly, really shocking. Yeah, Cooper, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, let's bring in our political correspondent, Tamara Cohen, who's in Westminster. Uh, Tamara, his opinion may not be agreed with by a large number of commentators, but it is his personal opinion, and it's not one he shied away from uh, talking about in the past. Why so much fuss today? Uh, that's right. He's not shied away from it, like, unlike other politicians of faith who have uh, tried to uh, dodge questions about their views. Uh, I think it's reasonable to say that Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, is a Roman Catholic. He's uh, in the debate on gay marriage uh, in the Tory party two or three years ago. He voted against it and made clear that his religious views uh, would not allow him to support it. So it's perhaps not a particular surprise that these are his views uh, on abortion. But what happens when uh, people talk about you as a future leader is that you get asked asked uh, questions publicly about these things and have to defend your views. Now, what he said will outrage and anger a lot of people, but I wonder if they include, I suspect they might not include, uh, his fans in the Conservative Party, because we've had this strange phenomenon over the last few weeks of Mogmentum, as it's being called, uh, with Jacob Rees-Mogg, um, uh, leadership uh, drives happening on social media, and now uh, just this week, the Conservative Home website did a poll of Conservative activists uh, which found that they uh, would choose Jacob Rees-Mogg as their favourite uh, for the leader, which is uh, interesting because, of course, it's the activists who, in any leadership contest, if one were to happen, make the final choice uh, between the last two contenders. Uh, now, the Conservative Home website suggests that this is perhaps uh, something to do with uh, protest voting and a demand for more authenticity. Uh, but when whether uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg coming out with these views takes the shine off him uh, for the activists, uh, we'll have to see. Certainly, his lifestyle has not perhaps uh, got much in common with a lot of other people's. He's known as the member for the 18th century for perhaps uh, that very reason. Tamara, thanks very much. Now, he has tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. There's a website called Ready for Mog, and one diehard fan has even had the catchphrase Mogmentum tattooed on his chest. 
There's no doubt that Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg is a popular figure, but he's provoked widespread criticism by saying he doesn't back abortion under any circumstances and doesn't support same-sex marriage. Well, to discuss the views of the so-called member for the 18th century, joined by Ed Rennie, chair of Labour Life and Catholic coordinator at the Christians on the Left campaign group. We're also joined by Kerry Abel, chair of the Abortion uh, Rights campaign group. Hello to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Um, ladies first, what are we making of what Mr Rees Mogg has had to say today? I think... I think many people will be shocked by it. I think they'll, f they'll really feel that he's out of step with most people's um, point of view on this. Um, I think he's taking a really hard line absolutist position. And whether he knows it or not, one in three women will have an abortion in her lifetime. And so it's incredibly common and, and lots of people will really understand this and have a personal reaction to it. Ed Rennie, why not? Why not what, Kay? Well, <laughs> re in response to what we've just heard from our guest, hopefully you could hear her, no? Well, yes, I mean, I think the problem with uh, what Jacob Rees-Mogg is, his position is that uh, he's a free market Tory and of course uh, at Labour Life what we want to do is create a society where women don't need an abortion and if you're a free market Tory then we don't think you, you believe in the kind of policies that create the kind of society that see women having full equal dignity and when women have full equal dignity they don't need to have a recourse to abortion. You look at our uh, shadow foreign secretary Emily Thornberry, you look at Hillary Clinton, you even look at Angela Merkel or even the Duchess of Cambridge, these are women who've reached you know, the top uh, echelons of society and it's not clear that they needed an abortion to get to the top, so we want full women's equality and that means creating a society where every uh, woman and um, you know, also every man has full responsibility for his actions and so the way he illegal? treats women. Sorry Ed, just to stop you there, should it be illegal to have an abortion, just to clarify? Well, it is illegal at the moment. It's currently decriminalised under the 67 Abortion Act, and um, that law should change, but ultimately that law changing has to be the culmination of a process in society where we have a more uh, society based on solidarity, on the de equal dignity of all human beings, the child in, the, in, its, in, its, in her mother's womb, uh, the man and uh, the, the mother herself, and all women and all men are all equal. And if we create that kind of society, then women don't need an abortion. Clarify, and then changing, it's, changing okay, the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to clarify, you're saying it should be against the law for a woman to have a choice as to whether or not she should have an abortion. Is that what you're saying? That is the ultimate aim, but you have to create a society where women no, don't need abortion before you can change the law. Seeking clarification on that, we'll come back to you on it. Thank you. It is a debate. Um, Kim, what would you say in res Kerry, forgive me, what would you say in response to that? I think it's, I mean, I'd be careful about banding around people's names. Emily Thornberry is a really strong supporter of abortion rights and she's spoken at our annual general meeting. So I don't think that that's a good example. And I think it's a sort of classic way of talking about women without actually talking to women and asking what they want. Do you want to come back on that, Ed? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what, I've, what I've experienced, and I'm a, I'm a man as, as chair of Labour Life, all previous chairs have been women, and I think all future chairs of Labour Life will be women. And we're having a serious conversation at conference with Christians on the left on the Monday at lunchtime, you know, having this thing as pro-choice, pro-life, pro-conversation. It's going to be an all-women panel. So uh, Labour women MPs um, and other Labour women who are on the pro-choice or anti-abortion side, and that that's so, I mean, I take the criticism fairly. Men shouldn't be talking about women. But on the other hand, uh, you know, a, a decriminalized abortion system, a system where abortion is de facto on demand, it reinforces men's irresponsibility. It means that, um, you know, you were looking at dating apps uh, earlier. You know, men, men can have a free market, a kind of capitalist approach uh, to so women's sexuality women? and women's so bodies. Women. So can women, surely. Uh, yeah, but then, but then uh, the women, women's are, women are the ones who get pregnant, so men, men can walk away scot-free and they don't have to have a responsibility. It's an interesting so way of look looking at, at it. I always thought a couple yes. got pregnant, but there you go. Um, yes, uh, both. Kerry, as far as you're <laughs> concerned, um, we heard that abortion is illegal. That's, that's what we're hearing from Ed, and, and he makes a, a valid point there. You, you have a different view on that. I also wondered how you felt about the fact that, you know, this is what Mr Rees-Mogg believes. He is a, a faithful Catholic and he believed that is his part of his faith so he should be entitled to his view I think he um, is confusing or deliberately mis um, uh, misplacing his views 
because he is a, he is a politician and he's an MP, and so he's talking about the law on one hand, and the, and I feel like he's cloaking his views in Catholic doctrine on the other hand, because he is in Parliament making decisions on law, on British law for all of us, and he's made he's got really extreme uh, absolutist views which don't chime with what most people want. He's a representative of people in in Parliament. I don't think he's listening to people. I don't think he's in line with. With, um, with women and what women want. Um, I, I'd also say that um, the 1967 Abortion Act wasn't brought in just because of feminists like me who wanted it. It was brought in because of high, high rates of maternal mortality. Childbirth is still dangerous and forcing a woman to have... I want to talk about the morality of forcing a woman to continue a pregnancy when she said she doesn't want to be pregnant and even when it's a danger to her health. We saw in um, 2012 the case in Ireland of Savita Halapanava. She died because the nurse said, we're a Catholic country and you can't have an abortion. She died of sepsis. Ed? Well, that, that's just not true. I mean, there was an inquiry into the Savita case back in Ireland, and that was shown to categorically not be the case. But I, I think that's, that's beside she the point. Die. The point is... She died. No, she, she died, but she didn't die for, for lack of an abortion. She died because an she abortion get an abortion. She did. No, no, it's, it's simply untrue and anyone can look at the Irish inquiry where all the uh, obstetricians and gynaecologists of Ireland looked into that and it's clear that she, she was dying and an abortion would have increased the complications and, and wouldn't have saved her life at all. So that, that case has specifically been used by a global abortion rights campaign and it's been misrepresented. Okay. Well, but that's we'll, not what we'll we're discussing that today. We'll check that we're out just... and, we'll, and we'll talk about it uh, when we clarified it as for our, for our uh, viewers' sake. But I wonder, Ed, what your view is on uh, a woman being raped and falling pregnant. And we've heard what uh, Mr. Rees Mogg thinks. What's your view as an organisation? Sure, I think uh, when you've got to the stage where if, if society has accepted that uh, abortion is an unjust thing that takes the life of, of, of a child, therefore, even in the, the tragic circumstances of rape, um, you, you can't then have an abortion. And of course, but again, this is, this is about how do you create that society no, 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 no. Just, where just women don't need abortion? That. And how no, do you, let, how we've do done you... that, Ed, we've done that. So, mm. so just yeah, yeah. to clarify, you think yes. as an organisation that if a woman is raped and falls pregnant, you agree with Mr. Rees Mogg that that woman should still be forced to have that baby? Well, no, it's not a question of forced. It's a, it's a question of whether abortion is still the right thing to do. And I think even in the very tragic circumstances of a child being conceived in rape, you meet uh, pro-life women who said, well, actually, I've had my child, and here's my daughter, here's my son. And you meet the, the, the women who've had abortions okay, in rape, and they, and, way, they, and they let grieve their child. Let me ask you in a different way, then. If a woman is raped and falls pregnant, under those circumstances, can she have an abortion as far as your organisation is concerned? Well, of course, because that's the current law under the 67 Abortion Act. As far as your, as as your organisation is concerned, what would they like to see happen if a woman falls pregnant and uh, uh, as a result of being raped? Well, we would want to create the support network where women in that way wouldn't feel that they had to have an abortion and that what even if, if they carried the child to term, there would be... What if she wanted to have one? Well, indeed, but that's the law now. I'm talking but about a situation... what if she wanted situation... to have one? How would you feel as an organisation... If, you know, how would you feel about a woman having an abortion if she had been raped? You would well, rather she did it. As an organisation, I, 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 I keep saying this, Ed, as an organisation, sure. how would you feel about it? We would prefer women in those circumstances n not to go ahead with an abortion, but of course we would want to provide support for that. It's a realistic thing that, that, that we bring solidarity into that situation. Okay, let's ask Kerry what she thinks that about that. Kerry, what do you think about that? I think it's really cruel and unusual. I think. Um, I'm not advocating anything. I'm saying women should have a choice based on her circumstances and her life and what she thinks should happen. Are, are these organisations that sort of philosophise and, and don't put the woman first and don't understand that it's, it's um, a woman's body and it's her decision, I think is, is really... I don't understand it. I think it's really dangerous to, um, to say that in any circumstance somebody should, ha should make a certain decision. Um, I think that... Rape is horrific, and to force somebody to go through with a pregnancy they've said they don't want is is almost uncomparable. OK, it's good to talk to both of you. Sadly, we are out of time. We have other people waiting to talk to us, but thank you for taking the time to join us here on thank Sky you. News this afternoon. Joining us from Westminster is Freddie Gray, Deputy Editor of The Spectator. Hi, Freddie, thanks for joining us. What impact is this going to have on him wanting to be the leader, if any? 
I, I don't think it's necessarily going to have any significant impact on him wanting to be leader. I mean, Jacob rees has been very clear about his Catholicism all along, uh, clear about his very socially conservative views. And actually, I think, oddly, we're living in very different times. Ten, ten years ago, a politician saying something like this would have been considered beyond the pale. But now people want to hear from people with principles and people who are sincere. And even if they don't agree with it, um, they like the person, they admire them for saying what they believe. You, you see that with Jeremy Corbyn too, even a lot of people don't actually agree with his positions on foreign policy or his views on taxation, they like the fact he's consistent and they like the fact he has principles. Wasn't the case of Tim Farron though, was it? No, but I do think Tim Farron got quite a lot of sympathy um, because, I mean, Tim Farron's problem was he was a Lib Dem, uh, but I think he got sympathy with the broader public, particularly when he had to step down because he had stepped down effectively because he was bullied for his beliefs. And I think there's a fundamental strain of decency and tolerance in English life that doesn't like um, liberalism when it's illiberal, when liberalism says of views that aren't in keeping with a very narrow moral perspective that they are unacceptable. But isn't that the point, Freddie, the fact that he had to, you know, in your words, he had to step down because of his beliefs? Uh, but you don't think that that's going to be the case as far as Rees Mogg is concerned? Why? Because it's a different party? Well, it's a very different party, yes. I, I don't think the uh, Tory grassroots are in any way comparable to the Lib Dem ones. Um, and I think what Rhys Mogg has as well, which is this strange, ironic cult of appreciation, which is, is odd because he's both sincere and he's also a joke. And you see that with Corbyn and you see that with Trump and you see that slightly with Bernie Sanders in America, that people who are, have a sort of ironic appeal on the internet do very well, particularly if they can mix it with occasionally being very sincere. Um, except, I don't know, you, you'll know the figures better than me, that it, the, the Conservative Party is trying to become more progressive. I don't know what, how it breaks down percentage-wise with men and women, but that they're looking to, actively looking to enrol more uh, women, uh, younger women, and, and they will have a very different view, I'm going to venture, than Rees Mogg on abortion, for example. I'm not sure all uh, young women feel the same way as perhaps you do, Kay, about abortion. I, I think it's a, it's a morally complex issue. I do think the rape uh, I'm aware element of it being of morally complex, morning. and I know which side I stand on, and I know that probably most women uh, of my age and younger will have a similar view to me. You disagree? Well, I, th I, th I think surveys suggest that the public are uncomfortable, men and women are uncomfortable with the 24-week limit. But I, I, I think in terms completely of... completely different, I, Freddie, come on. It's not. I yes, mean, it's, it is. It's We're talking about abortion are... per se as opposed to the number of weeks. No, uh, Jacob rees made it clear that he opposes abortion on all fronts as a Catholic. I think people will look at that interview and they will say, I disagree with that, but I think it's a morally complicated area and I admire him for standing up for his principles. And what about um, same-sex marriage? Of course, it was um, a previous Conservative Prime Minister who uh, put into law same-sex marriage. Uh, he, his views, again, uh, laid bare earlier on today. Well, yes, again, I think this is something that uh, a lot of the public, while they uh, probably have very mixed feelings about gay marriage, certainly surveys think that they do. Which uh, surveys? They, I, they won't... I think we must be in different circles. Which surveys, ready? Well, I, 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 mean, I can't, sorry, I can't cite them off the Well, off you can't the cuff, just say I, I, surveys if you, unless you can actually tell me which ones you're talking about. Well, all right, I'd, I'd say that the Tory support in the North collapsed um, quite soon after accepting gay marriage, and that might not be entirely... Disconnected. Might have had something to do with UKIP. Tory, probably something to do with UKIP, yeah, who seem to be more robust on social conservatism. OK, good to talk to you. Thanks very much. This is one of his colleagues. He's been described as the MP for the 18th century. And today, Conservative Jacob Rees-Mogg reminded us exactly why. During an interview, he said he doesn't support abortion under any circumstances, even rape or incest and he wasn't too keen on same-sex marriage either but does he deserve the criticism that's been leveled at him let's speak to Labour MP Diana Johnson who backs a woman's right to choose and SNP's Carol Monaghan who is a practicing Catholic um, hello to you both um, Carol to you first of all talk to us about what you think about what we heard from Mr Rees-Mogg well I think um, the comments that Jacob Rees-Mogg made are certainly ones that many of us would find difficult and many of us certainly would have problems with. But the fact is that he is well within his rights to have those views, and it simply is up to the electorate whether they want to support him and vote for him. Diana. Can you hear me, Diana? 
Can you hear me, Diana? Sorry, I can't hear anything. OK, we'll come back to you in a second. We're going to sort that out. Sorry about that. Um, Carol, while, while we've got you and we sort out what's happening as far as Diana's concerned, I mean, we did hear from Yvette Cooper, and her view was that actually, you know, as an individual, he is perfectly entitled to his no, own well, opinion. Now, and he does that. share that opinion with many other people. Well, the, the thing is that society is hugely diverse, and it's important that Parliament reflects the diversity of society. And that means that Parliament will have people of faith, people of no faith, they'll have women, they'll have gay people. Um, and it's, that's what makes Parliament so interesting. And it's important that that, that diversity is maintained. Um, so I think we need... Sorry. I think it's important that we don't, we don't start determining who can or cannot represent people at Parliament. OK. Um, what's happening as far as Diana's concerned? Can she hear me? I can now. You can. Fantastic. Sorry yes. about that, Diana. Your thoughts on what we heard from Jacob Rees-Mogg? Well, I agree he's entitled to his view, but I think his views ref reflect something of the Victorian age and not something of 2017. And I think uh, in a recent survey, 6% of people have the view that abortion shouldn't be allowed under any circumstances. Two thirds of the British population think it's a woman's right to choose. Carol? Hello. Yeah, th well, I mean, that's, and if you look at the parliamentary split, then that probably reflects that, that as well. And that's why we have politicians from all different backgrounds, um, so that different views can be expressed, and, and that's important. Yeah, I mean, he is perfectly entitled to his own opinion, isn't he? And if, as a result, Diana, the, the, the Conservative Party feel that he is the best man for the job, then there we are. Well, good luck to them if they think that Jacob Rees-Mogg is the answer to their uh, problems in the Conservative Party. It seems to me that the whole debate around abortion has moved on anyway. It's 50 years since Parliament decided that in certain circumstances abortion should take place. And recently the BMA have called for the decriminalisation of abortion because it's still a criminal offence if you don't fulfil the actual criteria of the Abortion Act 67. And in Parliament in March we had a debate on this and Parliament voted to decriminalise abortion. Of course, it wasn't binding, but it was a reflection, I think, of modern values and what society thinks about these issues today. Carol, there's the rub, isn't it? Modern values, not only talking about uh, abortion, and he says that abortion should not, is not right, even if it involves rape or incest, which is, which is an interesting concept for most women. I wonder what your view is on that. Well, I, I think that's okay, absolutely Let me just let me wrong. ask Carol, I'll come back to you. Carol, sorry. Sorry, I struggled to hear that. OK, we're really struggling with these comms, aren't we? Let's, let's press on as best we can. I was making the point that Jacob Rees-Mogg is saying that even if a woman is raped, and indeed potentially raped by a member of her own family, she should still have that child. Where are you on that? Um, like as I've already said, I wouldn't necessarily share all of Jacob Rees-Mogg's uh, views. Um, However, you've got, to, you've got to appreciate that there are people of faith in Parliament, there are people of faith in society, and their views should be reflected. Now, it's totally up to the electorate whether they accept the views of Jacob Rees-Mogg, but um, he is entitled to, to state them, and he is entitled to hold those views. Where are we on gay marriage? Can we, can we widen this conversation out to gay marriage as, uh, as well? Dan, we were, I was talking to um, one of my colleagues from The Spectator earlier on today, and he was saying that because the Conservatives had introduced gay marriage uh, as being legal uh, under Cameron, to all intents and purposes, that is why the vote in the North melted away. Would you agree with that? No, I think that that's absolute nonsense, to be honest. And I think it's society in 2017, we, we think that it's right to celebrate uh, equal marriage, that people who love each other should be able to get married if they're a man and a woman or two women or two men. I think that's nonsense, actually, to say that that was the reason why the Conservatives vote uh, disappeared or, or melted down in the North. There are many other reasons why they lost their votes in the North, but I don't think that was one of them. What, what do you think, Carol? Well, I, I think society has come on a long way and so have many people of faith. I mean, I, I'm delighted to be from Scotland, a country that's 
the best place in the world for LGBT rights. So um, I think Jacob Rees-Mogg has to move on slightly from his position or, or move on a large way from his position. And many people of faith would struggle with the, the comments that he made in terms of gay marriage. So we're OK with his views on abortion, but not on gay marriage. Is that right? Sorry? I'm... So we're OK with his views on abortion, but not on gay marriage. Is that correct? Well, I, I think you've, you know, you're, you're asking me what my personal views are and my personal views are I am completely supportive and I celebrate that Scotland is, is hugely diverse and that, that we have great LGBT um, rights and um, we celebrate our diversity. Yes, but, you know, uh, if you're asking me my position on abortion, I, I'm a pro-life MP and I've, I've made that clear many times. Final thought from you, Diane. Well, I think Jacob Rees-Mogg is a character. I think the press love him because he makes these outrageous statements that uh, get the headlines. But I don't think he reflects the, the vast majority of what people think today about what's acceptable and the way women in particular should be treated and the opportunities available to them uh, that we fought long and hard for, such as the 67 Abortion Act. OK, good to talk to both of you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this afternoon. Now to a political row of a different kind. And the Tory backbencher, Jacob Rees-Mogg, has been branded extreme for saying he opposes abortion in all circumstances, including rape. The MP, who's been tipped as a potential successor to Theresa May, also says he objects to same-sex marriage. Our social affairs editor, Penny Marshall, reports on reaction to his controversial views. Jacob Rees-Mogg has been tipped as Tory leader. His old-style manners were today revealed to reflect what many regard as old-style views. He revealed he doesn't support same-sex marriage or abortion. I'm completely opposed to abortion. Life begins at the point of So why are, you on a, why are you prepared to say you're opposed to abortion, but not opposed to because the, the same-sex marriage? Then? But because it's a completely different um, kettle of fish. That with, it's a Catholic teaching. No, 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 hold on. It's a different kettle of fish that with um, same-sex marriage, that is something that people are doing for themselves. With abortion, it is something that is done to the unborn child. Are you completely and opposed different. to abortion in all circumstances? Um, yes, I am. Rape and incest? Sexual violence? I'm afraid so. Really? Life, life is sacrosanct and begins at the point of conception. The father of six, who claims that Latin is his first language, said his views were the result of his Catholic faith. But critics say he's out of step. He's absolutely entitled to express and, and hold these views, but he must recognise that that is not the view of the majority of the public. 70% of the general population and indeed 61% of Roman Catholics in this country support a woman's right to end a pregnancy. Rees Mogg's views are personal. A spokesman for the Prime Minister said she doesn't agree, but that abortion is a matter of conscience. Penny Marshall, ITV News. I've been